Hello everyone, I am Punchy, and I'm here today with one of my more requested videos. People often ask me, Punchy, what's with all these crazy glitches in the Silent Hill 3 speedrun? Because there's a lot of them, and there's not a lot of time to explain it while you're doing the run. And I keep saying, I should make a video explaining those, and then I keep not doing it. This is me finally doing it. So, first things first, we'll start with some advanced techniques. Rather than simply the big flashy glitches, we'll get to those, don't you worry about that. So, the first thing I wish to teach you is the concept of what I call the snap turn. Now, to explain what a snap turn is, first look at a regular turn. As you leave this room, naturally you want to turn up and right, towards, away from the camera. Uh, here's the turn as that turns out in the actual game. Pretty wide, right? Back up. We end up about here. That's not quite smooth, you know, not quite the straightest line possible. What if instead you could suddenly turn 45 degrees to the right and just immediately start running rather than having to, you know, take a whole arc around the corner? That's what a snap turn is for. Snap turn is when you press the strafe button, strafe in the direction, and the cardinal movement direction at the same time. That's sort of a confusing explanation because everyone uses different keys for this game on keyboard. Uh, so basically when you strafe left, also hit the left movement key at the same time, and when you strafe right, do the same thing. This doesn't work for strafe, because you know, you can only strafe left and right, you can't do it forward and backwards. So here's what that looks like. Boom. We ended up here instead, a much smoother line, much straighter, straight to the point, as you want it. Uh, you do however have to, it's more of a tap, like hold it for a little bit and then release your right strafe and right movement and then start holding forward, because if you keep holding it, and don't let go, this happens. Oops, you've strafed backwards, because you're, you know, moving in that direction. That is an advanced movement technique. But now we'll move on to an advanced movement technique that's maybe also a glitch, kind of? This is debatable, so I'm put- I'm including it, for the sake of completeness. Quick turn cancelling. This is also a fine place to do this. When you quick turn, there's a delay before you can move, right? Heather must turn all the way around before she can move again. That's no good. We don't want that. We want to move now. We desire the speed, folks. So what you do is when you're quick turning, press your aim key in the middle of the quick turn and you can start running immediately. In fact, you'll kind of snap to the direction if you do it late enough. Now, it is quite an analog thing. If you do it early, you start to turn in a wider arc, but it's very useful if you want to hit something that's sort of like 45, like just ever so slightly behind you, but off to the side. You can do this and start moving much quicker. You get much more mileage out of your quick turns this way. So quick turn cancelling. I will note as well, by the way, that the order in which you hit your strafe keys, because quick turning is done by pressing both of your strafe keys simultaneously. But obviously it doesn't have to be frame perfect. You can hit one slightly before the other. Now, which one you hit first will actually determine the way that she starts to quick turn, either turning clockwise or counterclockwise. So if you start to hit left slightly before you then hit right, it goes that way around. And if you do it vice versa, you get it the other direction. Uh, this is key, because if you do it the wrong way around, the quick turn counter will obviously go in that direction, rather than in the direction you probably actually want it. So you must be circumspect with your inputs to get the most out of quick turn cancelling. Oh goodness, jump cut. We're in the sewers now and we have a shotgun. That is because I wish to share with you the final advanced technique before we get into the juicy glitches, block cancelling. When you hold a weapon out, go to aim it, there is a delay before you can fire, right? Heather's holding up the gun animation must complete before she can take action, but she can also block using the dedicated block button. I think it's also the run button. I forget what the key overlap here is. Figure it out. It's in the control bindings. Blocking reduces damage, but that's all well and good. The thing we mostly care about, though, is that if you hold aim and then very quickly tap block and then fire, the blocking animation will delete the startup of her having to aim the gun fully before she needs to fire, like so. You can fire in an instant, as opposed to having to wait through this entire animation. And that saves time, because you know, you can aim a little bit quicker and what have you. I will note that this also bypasses auto-aim, so make very sure you're going to hit what you're aiming at before you do it. Like normally, when you press the aim button to aim the gun, Heather will take her time to point towards her target. Using uh, block cancelling, Heather will just fire where she's pointing immediately, so if you're not looking directly at what you're trying to hit, you're going to miss. 
Oops, I've jump cut it again. That's because we are done with the advanced techniques portion and we are ready to move on to full-blown glitches. Lovely, this is what you really came here for. So our first major glitch starts here in the sewers, in this area in particular. And this glitch is a full-on out-of-bounds skip that saves about a minute and a half. So the way this is performed is you specifically want to approach the right side of this little metal grating here. It has to be the right side, it's particular about where you do it from. Not super exact, but basically right side, not left. And walk backwards off the ledge, and as Heather is about to fall off, press your quick save key. That little save completed in the corner. That was probably too early. When you load the save, you'll find out. While you're loading the save, uh, hold down the aim button and walk in the direction of the ledge that you're trying to glitch off of, too. So, do it backwards. Still not quite the timing. The timing is tight. I've heard people say it's frame perfect. I don't actually think that's true. And if done correctly, boom. I am now inside of a wall. Now, for the purpose of demonstration, here's what happens if you don't hold down your aim key while you're doing this. Your aim key prevents you from slipping off ledges, right? And this follows that principle. So if you're not holding down your aim key, this happens instead. You don't clip out of bounds. If you're holding your aim key, boom. Easy. So now we're in a wall. So where do we go? Well, you can move freely. Move freely forward in this sort of a direction. The sewers out of bound is relatively straightforward. Just simply run forward. And that's the end of the sewers area. They're in the same room. That saves about a minute and a half or something. It's a pretty major skip. And yet it's not that hard. The quick save has some reasonable timing on it, but it's nothing that you can't learn. And just like that, we've taken our first step into the wonderful world of Silent Hill 3 nonsense. And jump cut to the next location we're going to be using for our full-blown glitches. This is the hilltop out of bounds. Specifically, this is Otherworld Hilltop, the fourth floor that you can reach via the elevator. Uh, we are going to once again perform a ledge out of bounds, but this one uses a slightly different principle than the sewer one. The sewer one can be done by a ledge that you can jump off of. This, however, isn't jumping. This is teetering, and it works much the same way. But you may be wondering, you know, why is that special? What, what difference does it mean? What implications does that have, Punchy? The implication is that this only happens on normal difficulty. On easy mode, this mechanic is disabled. You can only uh, sort of rub your face against ledges, but you can't fall off. And the reason for that is that if you continue to teeter against an edge, the Heather die. And you presumably don't want that, so no. Instead, approach the ledge at this general area. Again, location matters. Try the right side here. And then quick save when you touch the edge and are about to start teetering. And then release movement key so that you don't press again and send Heather to her doom. And once again, load your save while holding the aim button. And holding forward in the direction of the ledge. If done correctly, here we are. We are now out of bounds. In fact, I got that first try. So from here, run forward, turn left, and head forward in this sort of direction. You go in this general direction. You can't really see what you're doing at the moment because of the wall, and that's fine. The camera will eventually find its way to you. And the camera, see at this point, right, while we're in the void, the camera will work for us. See, the camera has latched onto the next room that we need to go to. Follow the camera. Trust the camera. The camera doesn't like being out of bounds. It likes to find rooms. And that's good for you because you also want to find rooms. So you find this door. Make sure you're actually in bounds before you approach the door. Typically what you do is you clip through the door and then quick turn to face it. But make sure you're actually in bounds before you press quick turn, because if you quick turn while you're in the void, the game crashes. <laughs> so make sure you're actually in bounds first. And then you open the door and you're in the room with the vending machine and the coin. You can do this immediately on getting to Otherworld Hilltop, meaning you can skip picking up the pork liver thing, uh, the chemicals that you need to sort of burn the painting away. That whole puzzle. This simply teleports you to the room with the vending machine, and then you can go and get the key, etc, etc. So that saves a tidy amount of time. Ooh, new location and new sweater, because I'm recording this part on a different day. Anyway, following on from the Hilltop Out of Bounds, this is Borley Skip. You may know Borley as the part of the game where you have to sit through a haunted mansion where some dude talks at you for several minutes, and it's generally very slow and no good at all. So we can skip it instead with glitches using what is imaginatively titled Borley Skip. But there are two versions of Borley Skip. The short and simple version, and the long and complicated version. 
Uh, I recommend the short and simple version for beginners to the glitched category, and it's very simple. It's done with the same methodology as the hilltop out of bounds. Simply approach this ledge and then press quick save when you're about to start teetering off the edge. And then while you're loading your save, hold down the aim button and forward in the direction of the ledge. It's crucial that you hold forward in the direction of the ledge for this one. The other skips are more permissive about not holding down forward. It just makes the timing window a bit easier to work with. This one, if you don't hold down forward, will generally crash the game. Why it does this, I don't know. But it does. That would be the game crash. <laughs> Guess who didn't hold down the button? Fuck. And that's what happens if you do it correctly. You simply walk to the other side of the Borley gate that would normally be blocking you off, and you can just go and proceed and do the rest level. That one is the simple version of Borley skip. It just straight up skips Borley and nothing else. It's that easy to do. Uh, assuming you actually <laughs> hold aim and forward like you're supposed to. So yeah, very simple. Saves several minutes over sitting through all of Borley. Is relatively straightforward to do, but do make sure you actually hold down aim and forward, otherwise you crash the game. Okay, back at the start of Borley, as I alluded to, there is a short version of the skip and the long version. The long version, generally done by advanced runners looking to save extra time, as the long version is faster, but more complicated. Once again, the same methodology is taken, but you do it from this position instead, on up to the ledge, quick save when you touch it, load your save, hold down aim and forward as you walk towards the ledge. That was probably too early, yep. That's fine, these things happen. Simply try again. If you miss the timing, it's not a big deal. Just give it another attempt. These can be finicky. I've heard people say these are frame perfect. They're probably not. You can learn it. And once you get it, you find yourself on the other side over here. And once you've made it here, your goal is to run through the void and find uh, the room that we need to progress. I call it the dragon room because it's got the statue of the dragon in it. That might not mean anything to you if you haven't played an excessive amount of Silent Hill 3. <laughs> And as for how to navigate in the void, this is something that just sort of comes with feeling. Using sort of like the cameras as a baseline there, you sort of turn and face in a direction from it. You're going to need to feel this out by way of practice. This is very difficult to explain by anything other than like intuition. And actually, it's, it's a surprisingly long path to get to where you need to go. So uh, this is the reason that this long version of the skip doesn't save a huge amount of time, as much as you might expect, over the short version, but it is technically faster. So people seeking to get the best times may wish to try and learn this particular route. I have made a bit of a mess of this, frankly. It's sort of in this kind of direction. When you get to sort of the right place, the camera will help you out. But there we go. The camera's latched onto it. That was not very clean, but I'm just going to take it. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I'm not very good at this one. I had to relearn it in the process of shooting this video. This is the room you're after. This is why I call it the dragon room, because this is the dragon that guards the treasure chests. It's just a prop and not scary at all. And this leads us nicely into our next glitch. Ooh, boy. The next glitch. So, this next glitch is what we call Monster Out of Bounds, and I'm going to show you the methods for how this works without any monsters in the room. The basic gist of this one is that we allow monsters to punch us out of bounds by lagging the game forcefully such that the game's collision sort of doesn't work and it allows us to clip through. There are two ways of doing this, generally. There are many ways of doing this, really, but there are two generally agreed upon convenient ways of doing it. One is to mash alt and space together. When you mash alt and space, the game will freeze for a frame. This is kind of hard to see without any motion occurring, but I assure you the game is progressing at like one frame every time you do that. That is a way to generate lag. Or the much more consistent but much worse way of generating, generating a lot of lag is to hold down alt enter and repeatedly resize the game window from full screen to windowed, which is great, 
especially great to do on OBS capture because uh, OBS hates it and will reduce the frame rate of this video capture to two frames per second. I will now demonstrate this by moving my head around while I do this. I don't have a clue what that looked like on recording, but it probably looked quite bad. <laughs> so, now that we know how it works, I will now explain the actual place to do it. Step one, turn your flashlight off from going into this room. Step two, head all the way through here. Try not to attract the attention of the dogs. That enemy is your friend. You want to run into this corner, and then when you see the pendulum approach you out of the corner of the, the bottom left of the screen, start holding down Alt and Enter to repeatedly resize the game window. And what you want is for this guy to hit you through the level boundary into this corner, which is fairly consistent if you're lagging the game with this method. I, I, my lips are probably running at like two frames per second while I'm doing this. This trick is so good. And yep, sure enough, that got through. Now what you want to do, stand up, move a little bit left there so that you clip through the pole and then quick save while you're inside of it. Unfortunately, I fell out, so I'm going to have to redo that. Cut. What's fun about doing this as well is that it also like rearranges all of your desktop icons because it's like changing the resolution and all that. Okay, there we go. Once you're in, once you're in this position, inside the wall here, finagle yourself slightly forward such that you're behind the light pole over here. There we go, here will do. I would hit, but that's fine. Then quick save once you're in here and load the quick save. This will allow, this will drop enemy aggro for a split second, allowing you to perform the next phase of the trick, which is you quick turn but make sure you're sort of centralized with the pole while you're doing this. If you're a bit too far to the right, you'll probably pop out the right side and ruin the whole trick. And if you're too far to the left, you'll probably stay inside the wall. But what you want to do, quick turn, aim, and walk backwards. This can be a bit funny, subject to auto-targeting being a pain. But if you do it correctly, there we go. You pop through the back wall, just like that. So now, you move on to part three of the Alessa skit, which, uh, yeah, this is getting kind of complicated, huh? You want to be about here. You want to touch this little, like, grading here. See this area? See this metal grading? When you touch this, woo, suddenly, funny warp. But that doesn't really let us go anywhere. We can't proceed forward. There's, like, an invisible wall blocking us from making progress here. So what is a heather to do? What a heather is to do is to strafe into this metal part of the, the level while holding aim. As we've established, aim prevents you from teetering off ledges, and it can be used to our advantage in this case of this weird buggy ledge because it will zip us on the other side of the invisible wall. And from here, you just run straight forward. And I mean straight forward, like hold forward, do not touch anything else. <laughs> Pro proceed through the void as though nothing is wrong. As indeed, nothing is wrong. Trust this, trust the process, the camera will guide you to your conclusion eventually. As the camera, as I stated earlier, likes to be in bounds, it does not like to be out of bounds. Eventually the lighting changes slightly, that's a sign that you're on the right track. And the camera has latched on to our target. Now from here, there are two things you can do. One is that you can kind of, like, go up here and then run under the stairs, because the door's hitbox is perfectly visible all the way from the bottom, or you can just sort of pop yourself back and bounce right here, and go up to the top if you want. That's allowed, it's legal, and that allows you access to the final area, the church. I'm gonna hit that quick load real quick just to sort of demonstrate. Run forward here, and you stay under the stairs. And as long as you line up approximately with the door's hitbox, you clip out, you, you can access it from down there. Just mash interact while you're down there. You'll find the hitbox eventually, it's fine. And now we move on to the church. Okay, and now we come to the final area in the church where we can do glitches in the standard any percent run. But the first thing you wanna know about this trick is that it involves the enemy the closer. And you gotta know about their attack patterns first. Closers have two attacks they can do. The strong stab, like that, and the weak stab. They did the strong stab twice. The strong stab has a 30% chance of coming out, whereas the weak stab has a 70% chance of coming out. You want the weak stab for this purpose. The strong stab, for reasons unknown to me, cannot push you fully out of bounds. I don't entirely know why. So with that in mind, there is a 30% chance that when you attempt this out of bounds, it just won't work for no particular reason. Just bear that in mind. But otherwise, the principle is similar to the lesser out of bounds that we showed. You want to run at this kind of corner, this seam here, wait for the closer to get behind us, and then start holding our alt and enter, which should hopefully lag the game enough to push us through the wall. 
Yep, I'm through. Okay, and once you're through, it is imperative that you be careful when you get back up. If you run too far forward here, away from the camera, you'll crash the game. Like, immediately. Stay close to the wall here, and instead run more sort of to the side in this kind of a direction. From here, once you're out of bounds, you can simply navigate through the void all the way to the end room of the game, completely bypassing the entire church and everything you need to do in it. But how do you navigate the void? Honestly, more of an art than a science. You kind of need to practice this and get the feel for it. What I do is when you get to about this camera angle latch on, tap left a couple of times, and that tends to sort of point you in the right direction. The exact force of the press and how long to press it for is very hard to explain verbally, particularly because, candidly, I'm not great at executing clean church out of bounds. This game has, like, analog movement, so it's uh, a bit hard to instruct exactly. This is the room you're looking for. In fact, this door is the exact door you're looking for. Nice, that came out really good, actually. Straight into the last hallway, and that leads us straight to the final boss. So that's the church out of bounds. That's exactly what you need to do. And doing that takes us to the game's final confrontation. So doing so, you can skip the entire final area of the church. But we are not done with all the possible glitches. I have merely showed you all the ones that are possible on standard New Game Any Percent, but there are additional glitches that are only possible on New Game Plus. That's why we have this funny halo floating around our head. This is actually, this only happens on New Game Plus? I don't know why. It's kind of neat though, isn't it? I think so. And once again, we're going to use what we've learned about Monster Out of Bounds to perform a New Game Plus exclusive version of this particular skip. We're going to take this guy. And we're going to position ourselves about here-ish. And this guy is going to try and bonk us through this shutter. Yep, that got through. Cool. Once you're through, mash to stand up. Run forward and to the right about here-ish. You, you don't have to run that far, probably. Make a quick save and a quick load. And suddenly, just like that, you're at the very end of the mall segment. You just need to sort of activate this. That's a door transition. You need to press interact on it. And that leads you to the end of the mall segment straight away. Doing so, you've skipped the entire mall. Right there, right then, from the very beginning. Saving several minutes. Or have you? You see, there's a problem with this strategy, and you may be thinking, well, there was nothing about that that seemed New Game Plus, you know, why does this only work in New Game Plus? Well, the answer lies in Heather's right breast pocket. We don't have our flashlight. Lacking the flashlight, it is actually impossible to complete the game. You softlock when you get to the mattress in the hilltop apartment building because you can't push it, because Heather can't interact with it, and we have found no other viable source of light that functions as a alternative to this. So currently the game is in a state of being impossible to complete. We have softlocked as we have skipped the flashlight. But there is a way. There is a way. And it can only be performed on New Game Plus. So now I introduce you to our final glitch type and the only one exclusive to New Game Plus. The Princess Heart Skip. Princess Heart is a costume that is only accessible on New Game Plus and it has unlock requirements like killing I think several hundred enemies. I forget what it is. Look it up on the wiki. Uh, when you equip the costume, it plays this funny little cutscene of Heather transforming into a magical girl. This cutscene is important. If activated while crossing load triggers, it breaks all kinds of things. Usually this just crashes the game. But for our purposes, it can be very useful, because right now we're going to use it to warp back to the mall. Because, like I said, right now we're softlocked because we don't have our flashlight. This is me pressing the flashlight button, it's not doing anything. We don't have it. We can't finish the game without it, so we can need it. What we need to do is we need to activate the Princess Heart costume while going over this load trigger. Specifically the one going down. If you do it from the one going up, you crash the game. If you do it from the one going down, uh, this is the one that works. It's generally easier to do it uh, f from this backwards facing position because it's about one, two step like that. Equip, unequip, and if you get it right, the game goes black for a moment. And here we spawn. Now, crucially, do not move forward before you do this. You can strafe to the right. Strafing to the right is safe, but do not move forward. Make a quick save when you've strafed to the right, and load that quick save. Then you can move forward. If you do not make a quick save and quick load after you do that, you will crash the game immediately. The second you tap forward at all, the game will instantly hard close. I don't know why, it's a thing. But doing that, we've warped back 
to the mall, albeit on the lower level. So we walk out of the mall to the subway to walk back to the mall. And where does this put us? Conveniently, right next to the room with the flashlight. Aren't video games great? Smash cut to new room, this is the one with the escalators in it. This is where we're going to once again apply the Princess Heart out of bounds in this place, as we can finally skip more for good now by applying the Princess Heart technique on this escalator right here. Hit this while going over the transition. Again, it can be kind of tricky. This is a thing that requires practice and timing. Not quite. Still not quite. That should do it, I think. Yeah, there we go. And once you've made it out of bounds here, uh, immediately quick save and quick load, because this resets Heather's speed back to running speed. It's a whole thing with running speed. I don't have time to go into it today. And then you want to kind of tag the corner here, walk into it so that it's acceptable. The game now classes you as running, and you sort of want to take off in a sort of forward right-ish angle. And if you took off in the right direction, your running angle should take you right to the end room of the mall once again. Uh, again, the camera is your friend here. The camera has latched onto the final room for us. It will latch onto this final room from quite far away, actually, so this is not as precise as it looks. It's a pretty big room, too. So once again, you just walk back in bounds once you find it, touch these shutters, and boom, you are once again back at the end of the mall, where the subway cutscene would normally play. Fascinatingly, because we've already been around this way and skipped this before, when we enter this room, the cutscene doesn't replay. Uh, we just kind of smash cut to the subways. Because <laughs> we've already skipped the cutscene the first time, it won't replay it. So we have now teleported to this area of the subway twice in the course of a New Game Plus run, and this all happens in the span of a minute. And be it, between the two skips where we get clipped out of bounds, and then teleport back to the mall to grab the flashlight, and then skip back out of the mall through the out of bounds. That whole sequence saves about, like, 15 seconds. <laughs> Aren't speedruns great? And now that we're in the subway, I'm going to show you the last skip I have to show you here. This one is not technically exclusive to New Game Plus, but it is most often deployed on New Game Plus. Uh, normally the subway is not skipped on regular any percent because we need the shotgun from the subway to do damage, but if you're running a category like knife only, for instance, then you wouldn't have a good reason to not skip the subway, so here we are. This applies via the ledge jumping technique that we learned back way back in the sewers out of bound, uh, but it also works in the subway at about this sort of a location. Run off this ledge, hit save, quick save, and again... Hold aim and forward towards the ledge, and if you do it right, this will appear. Now, this is where it gets tricky, because you are now out of bounds and you can't see what you're doing. I'm deliberately not touching anything, because there's a couple of ways to go about this. The advanced way is to just sort of slightly tap to the left and try and navigate your way blind. The beginner way of doing this is just hold forward for a moment. And eventually the camera will catch up to Heather. Then you want to turn around, point the camera in this kind of direction, and run forward. And again, eventually the camera will catch up back to you, and you're aiming for the right side of this platform. Once you get to here, you can just pop through the concourse door like that. Whoop. No problems there. And you've skipped to the end part of the subway. Again, from the start, just like that. Uh, fascinatingly, doing the skip this way also means that when you touch the door that normally spawns the dogs in, the dogs uh, don't spawn in. So you can freely just touch the rail without uh, getting ran over, you can just climb back up. Skip this cutscene, and the train also, like, isn't here. But you can... ...just go through the door, and now the train is back. And then you run forward and get on the train and continue on your merry way. Now, the advanced method, once you've gotten out of bounds, is just kind of tap left a couple times, then start pressing forward, and you kind of feel it out from the speed of the camera scroll there. This is a thing that requires practice, and like a lot of it. And I don't even think I did it that well there. I think I turned a bit too far. No, I've lost track of this completely. See, it's hard. Bit forward, bit left. There we go. <laughs> Better attempt at this. The advanced version is difficult, it takes practice. Unsurprisingly, it turns out maneuvering around out of bounds in the void totally blind is in fact something that requires a decent amount of practice to get good at. 
But that is all of the Silent Hill 3 tricks that I have to show you here today. Hopefully you learned something, maybe you just thought it was interesting, this wasn't really intended as a tutorial per se, more just something interesting to do. What happens if you jump off here? Then you can just jump straight back on the tracks. The train isn't here after all. Excellent. There is nothing stopping me. I'm a genius. Heather is now hit by a train. I think that crashed the game, actually. No, never mind. Heather's dead. Heather, die! Thank you very much for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, uh, leave me a like and a comment, etc, etc. People have been requesting me to do a Silent Hill 3 glitch video for a long time, and this is me finally doing that. But also, uh, stay tuned after the fade-out, because I have something special to announce. Right, hello again, it's Punchy on a different day of recording. Thank you very much for watching that video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, a comment, and consider subscribing to the channel, etc, etc. I have also cunningly placed a couple of outtakes after the end of this segment to try and trick people into watching this bit, so stay tuned for those if you want to see them. Now, as for the announcement, I'm going to rip the band-aid off, I've made a Patreon. The reason for this is that, frankly, uh, people on YouTube have expressed a willingness to support the kind of things I do, but I'm really more of a Twitch streamer with a YouTube channel than a YouTuber who, like, makes YouTube videos most frequently. So of the many content things I do on the internet, I've been making content on the internet for, like, almost a decade now or something like that. Uh, YouTube is the thing that kind of gets the short end of the straw, and the, frankly, the reason for that is that it just doesn't make very much money. Uh, I, this is not my job, content creation, I still work a full-time job on top of all of this, and I would like to at least op o offer the option for the people who primarily enjoy my content via YouTube rather than Twitch to support me. So that's how this works. Uh, right now, it is somewhat bare bones, it is mostly just a monetary support thing. If you do support me on Patreon, you will have access to the supporter channel in my Discord, which is mainly used for cat photos at the moment, <laughs> but, you know, these things could change. But right now, that is, that's really all I had to say. Once again, thank you very much for watching, I hope you'll consider supporting on Patreon. But if you just want to enjoy the outtakes, here you go, have fun. This kind of corner, this seam here. Wait for the closer to get near you, start rearing up for a punch, and get the strong stab, and know that your attempt is worthless, because... RNG. Cut to the next location we're going to be using for our full bone glitches. This is the hilltop out of bounds. This is the fifth floor of Otherworld Hilltop, except it's actually not that, because this is the wrong fucking place! <laughs> 